Ed jmtheam.org. Senator Schumer is in fact with us live via telephone. I remind my audience that I saw Senator Schumer over this past weekend and told them in order to avoid one of our public spats, we must talk about the uh, Hegel nomination. Uh, he told me he'd be meeting with Hegel, which of course we know at this point that he did already, and I begged him that even if he met with him, he should wait out the process and uh, not to make any drastic decisions too quickly. We know that hours after the meeting, Senator Schumer went ahead and endorsed the uh, nomination of Chuck Hagel for Defense Secretary. Uh, Senator Schumer, thank you so much for joining us. Welcome back to JM in the AM. Nochum, it's good to be with you, and uh, sorry I couldn't get on sooner. As you probably know, I'm chairman of the inauguration. You so have to make sure that's going right. I'm in the car now. I went home last night to get my last load of clothes to bring down to Washington. I know you have a flight. Yeah. To, I know you have a flight. I'm on an 8 o'clock flight. Right. I told you I'd come on your show. I was going to do it next week. But you've been talking me a China, so here I am. <laughs> well, you're a man of your word. We said we should do it this week, and uh, you and your staff made sure we would. Um, so, Senator, I, I'm sure you understand why so many, probably the majority of this audience, is angry at the president for this nomination. Uh, let me ask you that. Are, are, do you, in fact, sympathize and understand why so many people in the pro-Israel community do not like the Obama nomination of Hegel? Well, look, as is clear, I had my doubts about Chuck Hagel, and, in fact, made them public on the Meet the Press show. It got all over the press that Schumer, you know, is throwing some cold water on this nomination. And that was before he was nominated. The president asked me to meet with him before I made any decision. That was only fair, because um, I had lots of concerns that everybody has based on his statements, uh, almost all of which are five, so, you know, they're basically in the 2005-2007 time. Right. I sat down with him for 90 minutes, and I asked him many, many probing questions. I asked him point-blank these questions about Iran, about Israel and the Palestinians, about Hezbollah, about Hamas, all the things that I've spent my life, you know, standing for and fighting for. And his answers were not pat, were not check the box. You know, Nelkram, I've been around, I've been in politics 37 years, and I've been fooled on occasion, but not too often. I, I think I'm a pretty good, as they call it, BS detector. And he was sincere. He basically said, look, the bottom line is the world has changed since 2005, 6, and 7. Iran is far more dangerous and far more militant than it was then. Everyone would agree with that. George Bush wasn't shutting down Iran in 2005, 6, and 7. He said Hamas and Hezbollah are closer to Iran and more militant and worse. And my positions are these. And he enunciated them, and I made them public afterwards. He said not only should the military option lay on the table, terms of Iran. But if, he said these point blank, he's, and I, then I said, and what if there is no choice but a military option or a nuclear Iran, that the sanctions fail? We all hope they'll succeed, um, but they could well fail. And he said, then we have no choice but to take action. Right. But the bigger issue, Senator, and this is what I mentioned to you, son, that at least the bigger issue to me at this moment is the speed with which you endorsed his nomination. I mean, there is going to be a process, and there's going to be a committee asking a lot of questions, and no doubt he'll be giving a lot of answers. What if there's a revelation during that week or whatever period of time it takes, which is not satisfactory to you, which really gets you scared, which raises a red flag to a very important part of your constituency? Okay, let me say this, Nukum. Um I said to him, I asked him these questions, he gave me the explanations, I asked him in yes or no fashion, so there was no wiggle rule. I then said to him, I am going to make this public, and you're going to be asked these very same questions at the hearing. And he said, I will answer them in exactly the same way. So I think it actually helps the process. Now, he satisfied my concerns. I'll be watching him, you know, like an eagle. I will be on top of not just him, but the administration, as I've been before, as you know, Nuffram. You know, people say, well, Schumer wants to curry favor with the administration. Well, look. I'm, I'm a Democrat, and obviously I believe whether the president's a Democrat or Republican, you give him the benefit of the doubt of the choice. But when I'm different, when I disagree with them, I make it public. I think I'm the basically the only major Jewish official 
who, or any official who has disputed their view of Israel and Palestine. In other words, whatever you think of settlements, whatever you right. think of borders, the reason there's no peace is because the Palestinians don't want to recognize a Jewish state. And lucky for us, you used this show to do it. which was, Yes, I did. I right. did. Right. So you know and your listeners know, in this case, uh, Hegel convinced me that he had changed his views, not that his statements of the past were acceptable, that the world had changed, and he had changed with them. So it, make it, one more point now, yeah. this is an important point. God forbid we have to use the military option, and we may, to prevent the nuclear Iran. We are going to need a unified uh, administration, Jewish community, and Israel. 